Hi folks, I uh, thought I'd make a quick video to show you how to quickly uh, add wires onto the ends of the uh, panel mount 3.5 millimeter jacks. Uh, it's not that complicated. I would be happy to have my high school kids here put together a bunch of them for you and send them to you. But uh, if you do want to make them yourself, you're perfectly capable. Um, and I thought I'd make a quick video showing you how we do it and how to put on the heat shrink tubing and things like that. So this shows the end result of what we're going to make. Uh, sadly, my audio was not recording when I made this, so I'm just voicing this over. But it shows we're going to have three wires on the jack. Uh, they're going to go to the three tabs on the back. Um, and uh, the center, the, the longer of the tabs on the bottom, will get the black wire that goes to the tip. And the other two will get the left and right. Um, here's the, an example of the jack that would plug into it. And uh, you'll see that the, the longer one goes to the tip, and each of the other two go to the ring and the sleeve, which are, are these two here. Uh, hopefully that's clear. If, you, if not, um, you can only get it, a, as long as they're clean mounts, it doesn't really matter what color the, the wires are. In our case, we are going to uh, wire this so that the black goes to the tip, the green goes to the sleeve, I'm sorry, the green goes to the ring and the red goes to the sleeve. Um, again, as long as you're consistent, it, it's not that important uh, when you're just using this as a switch. As you can see, I'm using a pan of ice to hold this still and also to keep it nice and easy to film with the, the camera. Uh, you can use a helping hand here, even a second person, although the, the eventually the, it will get hot when you use the heat shrink. So some way to hold this steady is kind of important. So here I'm cutting uh, three uh, short, maybe three inch pieces of 18 gauge solid core wire. Um, these are what I had. I had red, green, and uh, black. I think black is important. The other two colors don't really matter as long as you are consistent. I'm just using a pair of wire cutters to cut those down to size, uh, and then I'll strip them. Here you'll see that I'm gonna use a, uh, actually a nicer stripper. Uh, it's kind of uh, meant for the for the task. I use that for smaller wires than this usually, but I had it, so I used it. And then I realized you probably didn't, so I switched over to using a more of the standard stripper you're, you'll find on a, a crimping tool um, for the the other two uh, wires. So here I'm uh, using the 18 gauge uh, spot. There, I'll take about a quarter inch off of the wires so that they'll uh, be easy to solder on. I do that with the red uh, and with the black and then all three will be ready to go. And uh, the green was a little bit longer, the stripped part was a little longer, so I just grabbed a pair of uh, snippers and uh, cut off the tip there. So now they're all the same length. Here I'm double checking to make sure that I'm going to put the uh, black on the same position as the last time I did this with the red and the green uh, going out to the, 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 right, the left and the uh, right, uh, just matching. I'm taking uh, the black wire, putting it into that little hole on the tab, uh, bending it over, uh, and then I will get the soldering iron uh, and solder it. You'll notice that it, it kind of dangles freely there. Uh, which uh, it's okay. Um, I will uh, tin the wire here. I'll tin the soldering iron to make sure it's nice and shiny. I'll wash it off on the uh, wet sponge, which you can't see. Um, I'll come back and I'll put some solder on that uh, on that joint, and then I'll hold the um, I'll actually hold the wire in place uh, while it sets up pointing backwards. Um, and that, that way uh, I don't have to try to do everything at once, right? The solder will, as long as I keep heat on it, the solder will uh, stay liquid and let me uh, position it the way that I want to. And at that point, it is um, going to stay there. I'll probably, I was probably blowing on it to let it cool a little faster, but once it dries, it'll stay out. I'll take a, just a pair of needle nose pliers and make sure it's as as tight as it can be, and that is a, a decent soldering. It's not my best soldering work, but it's it's not my worst either. Now you'll see I'm gonna do the same thing with the red. 
Um, I could hold it in place with the, the second hand there, which is what I was showing. I'm actually going to pinch this one closed first. Probably what I should have done in the first place uh, with the black one. Uh, get it nice and tight. Uh, again, it's dangling freely. That's okay. I'll get the solder in place. You'll notice that I put the soldering iron on the metal first to heat it up. Um, that's just the only way it really works well. And once I get some solder on the joint, I'll hold it in place, keep it hot, and then move the wires out so that they'll stay straight. It looks like they are closer than they are there. Um, they're, they're not quite as, as close as they seem because there's a, some depth to the black one. And we're going to heat shrink these so they won't, they won't come in contact anyways. Now we'll add the green wire following the same approach. We put it through the hole. Uh, we will uh, pinch that to get it tight. And I had some trouble here with the, the uh, camera getting in the way. Uh, but you won't have a camera in the way, so it should be fairly straightforward for you not to have something uh, difficult to, to work around. Uh, after we get it crimped on like that, we'll still let it dangle. We'll put some solder in place. Um, and as long as we keep that solder uh, heated and fluid, uh, we can move that wire out again and uh, just let it cool so that they're all pointing out. Now we're ready to put on some heat shrink tubing. We'll uh, put on the small tubing for each of them first and we'll come back and heat shrink them uh, and then heat shrink them all together with a larger one. So these are the individual ones. Uh, that one ended up being a little small to go over that joint. so. Uh, I went ahead and went up a size in uh, in those, but I'll I'll skip ahead just a minute till we are actually um, done with this and ready to heat shrink. Here you'll see we've got the individual heat shrink tubes on each of the conductors. Um, we're actually going to heat shrink these, and then we're going to put a, a larger uh, band for for stability. Uh, in this case, I, I the first time through I used a lighter. I prefer using a lighter. Um, you can control the heat. Um, it is much less likely to heat the entire project or whatever's behind this. Um, I do have a heat gun that I use for larger projects. So I thought I'd kind of show both. And that's the, the way to do it with a lighter. Um, and then I'll take a larger piece of uh, wire here and pinch them all together and uh, heat that up with the heat gun. So here we've uh, taken a, a larger piece. We're going to slide it over the entire group of wires and uh, all the way up to the, the uh, jack itself. And we'll pull out a, a heat gun, which I can't really show on the camera here. It's a, an expensive um, you know, the kind you get at Harbor Freight. Uh, and it does do a great job of heating things quickly. It, it's just not, a, um, it's not as controlled. So you'll see here it shrinks nicely and it heats it up and all. Turn it over so you can see that. But um, the entire unit gets hot. So the jack will get hot and all the wires will get hot for a while afterwards. So I kind of like the lighter approach better. But of course, that's entirely up to you guys. At this point, uh, we're done, technically, as far as the soldering goes. We are going to take this out. I'm going to uh, strip the three wires that we put on there just for testing purposes. I... Um, I want to make sure that they're wired correctly and cleanly. Unfortunately, uh, the way that I did it was I used a um, I used a toner on my multimeter so that I could hear whether there was a good clean contact. So I took this jack here, the breakout jack, and plugged it in, and then I used those three spots there to apply a voltage. Uh, and on the other end, I checked them um, by stripping these ends, and then. Um, holding my multimeter to uh, both ends and it did tone out cleanly. I wanted to make sure that when I uh, was testing the, the ground, it went to the black and it did. And I also tested to make sure it didn't go to the other two to make sure we didn't have a short or an open. Uh, the only problem is that without the mic working, you don't, you don't hear the toning. So um, I don't think you can actually see in the, um, in, in the video that it was um, actually also showing numbers on the screen, but that that's life. Uh, this this isn't rocket science. This is let's make sure that the black and the black, um, you know, uh, have continuity and that the other two don't. So you use the continuity testing mode of your multimeter, uh, or you can use an ohmmeter if you if you don't have that. 
Um, and this is just a good way to make sure that it is um, completely uh, clean and that all of them are uh, only, they're not shorting each other and there are no opens and you have good clean contacts. So the last thing I do here, <clears throat> I put a, uh, a washer on. Um, if I was going to send these to you, I would give you a washer because I think they'll help you mount these. But also, it's just a good way when I'm working with the kids, I always have way, some way for them to show that it has been tested. Uh, and this is what I would do with them is I would have them put a washer on it when it has been tested so that we know that it's, it's complete. You'll see this pretty much matches exactly with the one we started with. Um, uh, other than the color of the heat shrink tubing, which doesn't matter. Um, the positioning is the same. They test it out the same. And I think this is something that would be useful for you guys to when you're putting the cars together to just have a set of these that you could just use. I, I wish you could buy them in the store. But they're not that hard to make. And uh, if you want to make them yourself, I think this is a, a good way to do it. So I hope this helps. If you do want us to put them together, feel free to let me know. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll get some kids together to do it. Thanks.